Hello friends and welcome back. Today's video is going to be a homeschool update for the year. This is our fourth quarter. We just finished our school year last week and so today I'm going to be doing a homeschool update for the fourth quarter or end of the year. Okay, so first I wanna let you know that we are year-round homeschoolers. We do not do school in the entire summer. We usually take at least six weeks off. So um, that's one thing to understand about us. And also, um, I have two children. One, Katie, um, who is a senior in high school this year. She will be graduating in a couple of weeks. And so most of her classes this semester, or all of her classes this semester were dual enrollment classes, but also most of her classes for the whole year were dual enrollment classes. So I will talk a little bit about that and just kind of some things to keep in mind if you are junior or senior um, do dual enrollment classes. Um, another thing is that my other daughter, Sophie, is a, was a third grader this year but she has special needs and she was really doing first and second grade level work in some of her subjects like reading and math. So her um, grade is not necessarily going to match up with the grade level of the materials that we're using. I just um, keep it on her level, whatever that needs to be. So we did have a lot of changes this year. So I'm gonna kind of go over what we were using and what worked and what didn't work. So first of all, um, we started the year on June 15th this year, which is um, a, was a little bit earlier than we sometimes do. And we did this because we knew that Katie was gonna be doing dual enrollment classes this year. And she had one high school class left to take for credit um, other than English, but she was gonna do English as dual enrollment. So we needed to get economics done and we wanted to get a big chunk of that done over the summer so that she didn't have to worry about that class as much while she was doing college classes. So that ended up being a really good thing for us to do be, for, for that reason, but also because um, I realized at the end of the year, if we would have only done dual enrollment classes and nothing else, Katie wouldn't have had enough days. Dual enrollment classes at the schools that we used, the college semesters are only about 15 weeks. And um, so you're only getting about 30 weeks um, for the school year. So um, in many states, you need 180 days, which is 36 weeks. So Katie would have definitely been short on days if we would have only done dual enrollment classes. So I'm very glad that that was just not something I thought about at the beginning of the year. But happily, <laughs> we made that work because of doing economics like during the summer. And she also did it. Um, she finished it up during our her Christmas break between the semesters with the college classes. So that ended up being fine. So Katie had Katie finished the school year with 190 days and Sophie finished the school year with 197 days based on our calendar that we had set for ourselves. Katie, of course, once she finished that economics class, she was just really on the school on the college um, calendar so she didn't need there was nothing for her to do unless she was doing something for one of those classes this semester but like I said Katie was doing dual enrollment classes in order to get all the all of the classes that she needed we did need to utilize two different colleges so one of them was a college in Columbia and um, we live in Hilton Head and that's um, over a two and a half hour drive so um, needless to say those classes that we used there were online classes the college that we use locally, she had um, in-person classes this semester. So I'm just gonna go over each of the subjects that we did and just kind of tell you what we were using and how it worked, if we changed, what we changed to, and what we thought about that. Um, so we'll start out with math. Um, Sophie had uh, started out the year doing rod and staff math, which was a really good fit for her as far as like learning her math facts, there's so much review. I would say to the extent that many children would probably need to skip lessons or, or maybe not do all of the problems because there's such a great level of review in Rod and Staff, but that's exactly what Sophie needed. So we started the year finishing up Rod and Staff Level 1. We moved into Rod and Staff Level 2. We went all the way through Lesson 92. I believe that Rod and Staff has a, either 170 or 180 lessons. And at Lesson 92, we switched to the Good and the Beautiful Level 2, and we started at the beginning of the book. Now, I really liked Rod and Staff for Sophie. The only reason why I decided to switch was because the amount of work was getting to the point with the review problems and everything that it was a little frustrating for Sophie, although she was doing very well. 
And my, my other concern was that there wasn't as much practice on clocks and, um, you know, measurement and the other topics in second grade math. It was really just very highly focused on um, addition and subtraction facts and moving into two and three digit problems, which Sophie did very well on that. But um, there were some issues going forward with Rod and staff that I just didn't think would necessarily remain a good fit for Sophie. So I thought that I would go ahead and try the good and the beautiful to see how that would work for Sophie. So I still think that Rod and staff is a really good program. We did not switch because I thought it wasn't a good program. It's just that I felt like the good and the beautiful might be a better fit for her where she is right now and it turned out to be a great fit. She switched to the Good and the Beautiful level two in mid-January. Like I said, we started at the beginning of the book and she did finish the book. So she was able to do two lessons a day for a good portion of the book and easily finish the book at the end of the year, by the end of our school year. Um, so like I said, I do feel like the Good and the Beautiful has been a really good fit for her right now. Um, with Sophie, you just can never say never. I mean, it, it's kind of like, most things don't remain a good fit, if that makes sense. Like we get stuck somewhere and we have to do something to overcome um, some obstacles. And so I just do what I have to do with regard to that. I used to be, I used to be very, a person who was very, very hesitant to switch curriculum, especially math, because when you jump around a lot, you might miss, um, you know, topics or subjects or, you know, have some gaps or holes. But now if I move, I just start back at the beginning of that level and I don't worry about it because sometimes that's what it takes for Sophie. So I think you just need to know your own child when it comes to switching curriculum, whether it's a good idea or a bad idea for you. So, so far the good and the beautiful has been a very good fit. However, even with that being said, I do feel that Sophie needs some review this summer before I move her to level three. So my plan for the summer is to continue reviewing the good and the beautiful level two i just bought an additional student book it was like 24 dollars, i think and we're just gonna do the assessments again and do just certain lessons again and i have also purchased some of the math mammoth um, blue workbooks for place value and clocks and some of those like specific subject things and we're just gonna camp out on some of that over the summer and then hopefully move sophie into the good and the beautiful level three probably around the end of August. And my plan is to do four lessons a week over the course of the school year. And um, she should be able to finish level three doing it that way. But if she doesn't, that's really not a concern of mine. So that's kind of where we are for math. So I feel like Sophie had probably more progress in math this year than she's ever had before. I am super proud of her because she definitely persevered. You know, there it was, a lot of what she's doing now is extremely challenging for her and I just feel like she has such a good attitude. She's so um, good at just persevering. So I'm really proud of Sophie for what she's accomplished th this year in math. Katie had a challenging semester for math. She took a calculus class at um, a local college. It was an in-person class. It was a four credit class. So it met for extra time during the week. It wasn't like it met three days a week, but it met for the time of like a Tuesday, Thursday class instead of a Monday, Wednesday, Friday class. So it was, you know, longer um, duration class. It turned out to be a very challenging class, very challenging. And Katie had already taken calculus using Shorman math and made an A in it. So we felt like she was prepared and she did feel prepared going in. But the class was just so challenging that Katie and I found ourselves just praying that she could come out of it with a C because she needed a C for it to count for her business school credit. She, she does need calculus for her business major and we were just hoping that she could come out of that class with a C so that she wouldn't need to take it again. And um, she just did a phenomenal job. She put a lot of work into that class and she came out of the class with a B plus. So, um, we were super proud of Katie for that. She worked very, very hard. Like I said, it was a very challenging class. Um, and actually that's the first B that Katie has ever made on a transcript. So she actually completed high school with straight A's and um, that was the first B. And we were never prouder of a grade <laughs> than that B. So we're glad to have that class behind her. And um, like I said, I'm just super, super proud of how hard Katie worked. I think it was good for her to 
finally get a B on in a class because I feel like that's going to happen again in college, and um, you know is you know that can be a struggle for kids who are you know high achieving students, really you know good students. Um, you know that can be hard to. You know, in other words, if they feel like a B is not a good grade when it is a good grade, you know. So anyway, we um, are glad that that one is over. And um, so anyway, we're, we're extremely happy that that one's done and extremely happy that she was able to pull off a B plus in that class. That was really phenomenal. Language arts. Um, so we also did some moving around in language arts this year. I'm not going to go through all of the things that we did, but just a quick summary is that we started out the year in using Happy Cheetah. Happy Cheetah is a program for struggling or um, struggling or special needs students um, in the area of reading. And so, um, Katie had finished. Um, Sophie had finished up her first grade Happy Cheetah and moved into second grade, and it got to be super hard. And um, it also lacked some grammar skills that I wanted for Sophie. So I thought about. So I decided to supplement um, Happy Cheetah using, um, I did a combination of first Christian Light, which was not a good fit for Sophie, and then finally moved her into The Good and the Beautiful. So we spent a good portion of the year doing one lesson of The Good and the Beautiful, and then we'd do one lesson of Happy Cheetah. But Happy Cheetah got to be so difficult that we decided just to switch to The Good and the Beautiful level one, just completely switch over. And Sophie did really well with that. Now, we had originally used the Good and the Beautiful Level K, um, and we had to move because it was too hard. We had to switch to Happy Cheetah, but now she's been able to come back. So Sophie finished um, out of the 120 lessons of the Good and the Beautiful Level 1, she finished 110 lessons. And we're going to leave that book there. We're not going to finish those last 10 lessons. We are waiting for the new Good and the Beautiful Language Arts to come out, and my intention is to buy Level 1 and Level 2. Um, we are going to do certain lessons in Level 1. We're going to kind of skip around, do some review, and then uh, ultimately move her into the Good and the Beautiful Level 2 for next year at some point, whenever she's ready. But I don't think she's ready to go straight into Level 2. I think she needs a little bit of review and a little bit of beefing up of her reading skills before we move on. So that's my current plan um, to start over the summer. The only downside is that um, The Good and the Beautiful is not releasing those two programs until sometime in July. Since we start our summer school in late June, the last week of June, that may mean that all we do for review for the month of July is just reading, which is fine. And then whenever we are able to get those two levels, we'll do some review in level one before moving back into the new um, Good and the Beautiful level two. So that's our current plan. Sophie also made the most progress that she's ever made in reading this year. I mean, phenomenal progress. So um, for her, I'm just really super proud of her perseverance. Like I said, with math, she just has had an absolutely phenomenal school year. Um, just so much growth you know she's reading now um easily on a sort of a mid first grade level um and her confidence is building in reading i definitely still think that reading is her hardest subject and i think a lot of it goes back to the fact that she has childhood apraxia of speech so she does have a genetic condition called set d5 which is the thing that causes the other issues that sophie has one of those being childhood apraxia of speech so Apraxia, the speech part of apraxia just means that she has trouble getting the word that she wants to say out of her brain and through her mouth, just basically motor planning. But it also has to do with like groping for words and things like that when she's reading. So it definitely has an impact in her reading and also it has an impact in her ability to use phonics. So we really have to use almost a solely sight words approach to reading. Now, she knows all of her phonic sounds and that does help her a little bit, but she's not a child that's going to be able to sound out words when she's reading. That just completely doesn't work for her. Um, that's way harder than just memorizing the words. So I definitely feel like for children that have to use a sight words approach, which is um, a very common thing with special needs kids, that's very commonly done with children that have Down syndrome. So. I definitely feel like it's a harder path to reading and it takes longer to learn to read. So at this point, I'm just committed to whatever it takes for her to be a fluent reader. 
um, whatever we have to do, however we have to do it, and however long it takes. Um, you know, that's, that's basically what we're going to do. But I'm very, very proud of her for what she's been able to accomplish this year and um, just with a joyful ad attitude most of the time. <laughs> So Katie um, took English 101 in first semester and English 102 in second semester as dual enrollment in-person classes. I can definitely say that these classes were not her favorite. She is just not an English person, a literature person. She is more of a math, um, you know, science type person. But she did very well making an A in both classes. She now has credit for those. She will not have to take English again. Uh, Katie did not take science this semester, but Sophie completed God's Design, Heaven and Earth for Beginners. That is a primary grades course from Masterbooks. It's basically kindergarten through grade two, and Sophie did really well with it. It was a good level for her with her reading level, her comprehension level, and she really enjoyed the book. With that being said, my plan though is to move her into more a unit study approach next year. Um, so she'll be more on a closer to a third grade level and my plan is to start using the good and the beautiful um, units for science and we will be starting that this summer with their ecology unit. For history, Sophie completed the good and the beautiful year one this year and we did enjoy it. Um, she does like the student explorers. I'm using the grade one through three with her and I'll continue to use that level next year. She does like the coloring and um, things like that that she can do while she listens. And so I feel like that has been just really good for her right now. Um, we do two lessons a week on um, Tuesday and Thursday and she's going to be moving to the year two book next year. Katie also did not take history this semester. So additional subjects that we did this year, Sophie did Bible um, twice a week using the book called Theology um, as a guide. We both enjoyed it. That book ended up being um, very transforming for Sophie. And I'm probably going to be making a separate video about that, how we used it and what it accomplished. But yeah, that was a really good book for her. Next year, I'm taking a completely different approach with Bible and moving into more like Bible stories. Um, using a level one Bible reader and we're going to do that because we can kind of accomplish multiple things at once. One, reading Bible stories on her level. Two, additional reading practice. And three, I plan to have her do some um, drawings of what she's reading as well as writing down some of the Bible verses so we can kind of work on handwriting and drawing and all of that in as we work on um, Bible. So we're taking a totally different approach next year with Bible, so I'll let you know how that goes, but um, I think it's probably good for the stage that Sophie's at right now. Another subject that Katie did was French. She did uh, French 2 at um, Columbia International University online this semester, and she completed that with an A. She did very well in French, and um, so now she has completed both of her foreign language requirements for her general eds for college and um, basically this gave her a fourth high school credit of French as well. So next year Katie's going to enter college with 22 credits completed. That will make her a second semester freshman because she would need 30 credits to be a sophomore and she'll and also those 22 credits they equate to seven classes because again, that one calculus class had four hours. So she's going to be going into college with um, credits for college algebra and calculus, English 101, English 102, French 1, French 2, and music appreciation. So those will all be completed on her um, college transcript and will just be additional classes for high school except for the one English that she needed to graduate. So we did have some challenges this year. Um, like I said, just figuring out the best program to use for Sophie and the best program to use for Sophie doesn't necessarily mean it's the best program ever or the only best program. It might mean the best program to use for Sophie right now versus six months from now. So figuring that out sometimes can be difficult um, we face that challenge every year, but I do think that we landed on the right things this year. Sophie made, like I said, more progress than she ever has this year, and I'm just super proud of her. Also, another challenge that we had was just adjusting to the dual enrollment classes for Katie. That can be a difficult adjustment. I think one of the things that Katie found most difficult was determining like how much work was necessary. In other words, like, 
she had had me for a teacher for so long. She knew what my expectations were. I think I might have given her a, more of a boundary of like, this is what I expect for you to make an A with, on this paper. And I think she was getting less input like that from the college professors. So I think she started out the year probably putting way more effort than was possibly necessary in classes and therefore she was spending a lot more time maybe than what was needed um, in some of these classes. So that was definitely something that she learned a lot in this year and I'm, I'm really glad that she had the ability to learn that this year because next year she should, you know, she'll be taking five classes at once. This year she never did more than four, so it's a good lesson to learn before you're kind of all in with the number of classes you have to take as a freshman. But overall, I, overall, I believe that this was one of the best homeschool years that we've ever had. I think um, both of my daughters grew a lot this year. I think I did as well, just in the challenges that we faced and overcoming obstacles and um, I will say that we're all <laughs> glad to be having a break. So I'll tell you a little bit about our summer plans, but right now we're entering a six week break, like complete break, no school. Um, Katie is going to be taking the whole summer off. We thought about um, an additional summer job. She does work for our company, um, but that is kind of like whatever's necessary at the time. So it's not like a very scheduled type of job. So um, we thought about maybe she should get a job. She thought about that a little bit, but in the end, I, I kind of just told her, I really just want her to have a good break because I do feel like this was a difficult year for her with all of the adjustments and things that she had to do. So the plan right now is that Katie's gonna take the whole summer off before she starts school in August um, with a typical five course load. Um, so she's looking forward to a really long break, the longest break she's had in a really long time because we've always done summer school. Um, Sophie and I are going to start summer back at the last week of June. We're going to do three day weeks until we get to August, then we'll switch to five day weeks. And over the summer, we will only be doing math review, language arts review, and we will be doing a science unit. Like I said, it's going to be the ecology unit from The Good and the Beautiful. So that is our only purpose over the summer. Once we get back to our five day weeks in August, we are going to start back with all of her subjects. So we'll integrate um, history, Bible, and handwriting at that time. We are planning to take, after we do our summer school, the three, three day weeks, um, the second week of August will be Katie's last week before she starts school full time and we do plan to take that entire week off. So we will be doing that and we'll just take off as we need to over the summer or move our three days. We're planning on doing uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, but we'll just move those days around as we need to every week. Um, and I don't anticipate Sophie's school taking more than a couple of hours a day with the subjects that we're doing with just reviewing language arts, math and uh, doing science. So. I feel like that's a good plan for us for summer. I'm very, very glad that um, Katie's gonna have a really good um, summer break. I think she really needs it and deserves it. I'd love to hear what y'all do over the summer. Do you take the whole summer off or do y'all homeschool year round like we do? If you do, let me know what your plans are. I hope you've had a great homeschool year and um, you know, let me know below if there's any additional homeschooling content that um, you would like to see on our channel and also if there's anything you would like to see with regards to high school or dual enrollment while it's kind of fresh on my mind um, with, with Katie entering college next year. Um, I would love to make those videos for you while it's, you know, still fresh and more current. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time. Bye.